in section 3.7, the derivative of the natural logarithm, logarithmic differentiation, and the derivative of the inverse tan function. So this is from section 3.7 on your textbook. So we've actually seen how to differentiate the natural logarithm before, but we'll combine it with the chain rule and see how it's also combined with the product rule. On the other side, you'll see how it's combined with the quotient rule as well. And then we'll get to a new topic, which is logarithmic differentiation, and we'll conclude with the derivative of the inverse tan function. Okay, so let's say our function is ln of x. We've seen before in a table that its derivative is 1 over x. So remember, this means log base e, natural logarithm. Combined with the chain rule, this says if we have a function that's ln of some function, its derivative, derivative is g prime of x divided by g of x. So the derivative of ln of stuff is the derivative of that stuff divided by the stuff. So in this case, right, we apply the chain rule to ln of g of x, where ln was our outer function. So the derivative of the outer function was 1 over the 1 over the outer function, 1 over the input. And then we differentiated by the inner function. Here, the inner function is g of x. So this, it was simplified, but it would have said, before simplification, it would have said 1 over g of x times g prime of x. So we differentiate the outer function. If I would at the inner function, g of x, 1 over g of x, and then multiplied by the der derivative of the inner function, g prime of x. 1 over g of x times g prime of x. g prime of x can be written as g prime of x over 1. So 1 over g of x times g prime of x over 1 is the same as g prime of x over g of x. Okay. Now let's see an example how to differentiate a function involving a natural logarithm. Let's differentiate this function, x squared times ln of squared of x minus 1. So this is the product of two functions. The first factor is x squared. The second factor is ln of squared of x minus 1 x squared times ln, parentheses, x minus 1 to the half. We rewrite square root of x minus 1 as x minus 1 to the 1 half power, only because we can easily see how to differentiate that function using the power rule. We've seen the power rule and the generalized power rule, the power rule combined with the chain rule in the previous slide. Previous lecture, sorry, not previous slide. Okay. So to differentiate this function, this requires the use of the product rule because this is the product of two functions, x squared and ln of square root of x minus 1. So we differentiate the first factor, derivative of x squared is 2x, multiply by the second factor, ln of x minus 1 in parentheses to 1 half power, add x squared, the first factor, times the derivative of the second factor. To differentiate this second factor, we use the rule that was given the previous slide. The derivative of the ln of a function is the derivative of that function over that function. Here, the derivative of x minus 1 to the 1 half power, 1 half comes down, you subtract 1 half minus 1, you apply by the derivative of the inside function, x minus 1. But of course here, the derivative of the x minus 1 is just 1, right? The derivative of the x is 1, the derivative of 1 is 0. So we're left with x squared times 1 over 2 times x minus 1 to the negative 1 half power. And we can rewrite that, okay, something raised to the negative 1 half power, that means 1 over that something raised to the half power. So we brought these factors down to the denominator. It's the same as x squared over 2 parentheses x minus 1 to the half times x minus 1 to the half. The derivative of the function is 2x times ln of square root of x minus 1 plus x squared over 2 parentheses x minus 1. x minus 1 to the 1 half times x minus 1 to the 1 half is the same as x minus 1 half squared. Squaring undoes the 1 half power, so we're left with 2 times x minus 1. That's assuming that x is larger than 1. Okay, and there you have it. That's the derivative of that function. Now you'll see on some web assign problems that I will assign this coming week. You can also combine this not just with the product rule, but also with the quotient rule. But the same rules apply. Okay. Now the next topic is logarithmic differentiation. 
So this is a new this is a new concept, and it shows the power of using logarithms. So to differentiate a function using logarithmic differentiation, you follow these steps. The first step is to take the natural logarithm of both sides. Ln of y is ln of a function, and I'm going to call ln of the function on the right hand side, ln of f. G, G, I'm going to call that g of x. Now, g of x is going to be simplified using laws of logarithms. It's the laws of logarithms, actually, that allows us to differentiate functions that couldn't be differentiated otherwise. The next step is to differentiate both sides. The derivative of the left-hand side is y prime divided by y. So here we treat y as an unknown function, and we just differentiate the left-hand side using the using the rule we saw in the first slide, or equivalently, using the chain rule. And we differentiate g prime of x. So g of x, this represents the simplified version of ln of f of x. How, what happened, what did ln of f of x simplify to when we applied laws of logarithms? Now, hopefully, and the whole purpose of doing logarithmic differentiation is that Differentiating this function, g of x is ln of f of x, will be easier than differentiating f of x. So if you notice, what, is lo what do laws of logarithms say? Laws of logarithms say that the logarithmic function takes products to sums, takes quotients to differences, and takes powers to products. Products are easier to differentiate than powers. Sums are e and differences are easier to differentiate than products and quotients. So that's why logarithmic differentiation allows you to differentiate functions that might not otherwise be differentiable. Or, I mean, they're, they're differentiable functions, but they could not be differentiated otherwise. Final step, once we have y prime over y is equal to the derivative of this function, g prime of x, we solve for y prime. y prime is y times g prime of x. And we replace y is f of x to get the following. y prime is equal to f of x, the original function, times g prime of x. So I think this is best seen in an example. Let's look at logarithmic differentiation and action. Let's differentiate this function, x to the x squared. Notice it's not a power function. It's not an exponential function. We can't use the rules for differentiating power functions or exponential functions to differentiate f x. So what are we going to do? We're going to use logarithmic differentiation. So take the natural logarithm on both sides and simplify the right-hand side using laws of logarithms. Take ln of y. We get ln of y equals ln of x to the x squared. Logarithms, natural logarithms included, take powers x to a power, or a to the b, that's equivalent to b times logarithm of a. And that actually does, that, that holds for all bases. Log base 2 would obey the same rule. So in particular, this is the same as ln of x to the x squared is the same as x squared times ln of x. Well, I don't know how to differentiate x to x squared, but we do know how to differentiate x squared times ln of x. That's just using the product rule and the fact that the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. So let's differentiate both sides. The derivative of the left-hand side is y prime over y. The derivative of the right-hand side is 2x times ln of x plus x squared times 1 over x. 2x times ln of x. x squared over x, that's the same as x to the 2 minus 1, which is just x to the first power. This is from laws of exponents, if you notice x to the 1 is the same as x, so we get 2x times ln of x. So notice, once we simplified ln of the right-hand side, using the laws of logarithms, it was easier to differentiate. That's the purpose of logarithmic differentiation. Step 3 is to solve for y prime and replace y with f of x is equal to the original function x to the x squared. All this is is just multiplying both sides by y. y prime is equal to y times 2x ln of x plus x, so it's the same as x to the x squared times 2x ln of x plus x. And voila, there you have your function. So a function that couldn't have been differentiated otherwise was differentiated using logarithmic differentiation.
The next topic is going to be how to differentiate the inverse tan function. So this is also in section 3.7 on your textbook. I will be assigning some web assigned problems on that section this coming week. Recall that arctan is the inverse of tangent of x. It's equal to sine, tangent of x is sine of a function, sine over cosine. Or on a right triangle, it's the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. On the unit circle, it's the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate. And its domain is all real numbers. The domain of arctan is all real numbers. The range of arctan is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So that's the domain and range of tangent switched. If you recall, the domain of tangent is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Tangent has a vertical asymptote at both minus pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. And its domain, the domain of tangent, is all real numbers, minus infinity to, I'm sorry, the, the range of tangent is all real numbers, minus infinity to positive infinity. Arctan, those domains and range are switch, switch, so arctan can take any real number as an input, but it will only spit out real numbers between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And it will actually never hit negative pi over 2, nor will it hit positive pi over 2. If the function is arctan of x, its derivative is 1 over x squared, 1 over 1 plus x squared. So this is the rule. The derivative of arctan is 1 over 1 plus x squared. You can actually derive that from uh, the quotient rule for tangent, the fact that the derivative of sine is cosine, the derivative of cosine is minus sine, and the fact that, and a trig identity using secant. But that, that was sort of a little too much for now. For now, you, you can just pretty much memorize this rule. That should be sufficient, especially for doing web assigned problems. Combined with the chain rule, the derivative of arctan of a function is the derivative of that function over 1 plus that function squared. So again, it's just here the outside function is arctan. The derivative of the outside function of the inside function is the derivative of the outside function. You leave the inside function alone. So that's 1 over 1 plus g of x squared. Then multiply by the derivative of the inside function g prime. And as we saw before, if we multiply a fraction 1 over something, by g prime, that's the same as just putting g prime in the numerator. g prime is the same as g prime divided by 1. So here's an example. Let's say we differentiate arctan of x times e to the x over cosine x. To differentiate this, we need to use the quotient rule because it's a quotient function. And we also need to use the product rule because the, to differentiate x times e to the x, that's the product of two functions, x and e to the x. And of course, we need to use the rule we just saw in the last previous slide how to differentiate arctan of a function. So here's what goes on. What does the quotient rule say? It says the derivative of a quotient is equal to the derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator times the numerator. So here, the derivative of the numerator, what's the derivative of what's inside x times e to the x? It's e to the x, that's the derivative of the first factor, 1 times e to the x, plus the second factor, x times e to the x, all over 1 plus x times e to the x in parentheses squared. So to differentiate arctan, differentiate what's inside of arctan, put it over 1 plus what's inside squared. And of course, we multiply by the denominator left alone. Now we subtract. Now we're going to differentiate the denominator. The derivative of cosine, if you recall, is minus sine. And we leave the numerator alone. And then we divide all this by the denominator squared. And this is just it rewritten. Here we factor out e to the x and x plus e to the x in the numerator. Both share the factor e to the x. So we factor out e to the x. We're left with 1 plus e to the x. We can, when you take x times e to the x squared, that's the same as squaring the first factor, x, x squared, and squaring the second factor, e to the x squared is the same as e to the 2x. That's laws of exponents. And minus negative sine x, that's the same as positive sine x. That's all that's going on here. The way you write cosine of x squared is cosine squared of x. So this was just, this is just notation and factoring e to the x out and taking x e to the x to the second power. That's the same as taking x to the second power and e to the x to the second power using the laws of exponent. Okay, so you'll see if you see more practice like that of 
to differentiate functions of this form, including arctangent, natural logarithm, uh, applications of logarithmic differentiation, and applying those rules to product and quotient rules along with the chain rule, respectively. So that's what your web assigned homework will be for this coming week. I will see you all on Monday.